chairman. Uh, in this part, I'm going to talk about another autoimmune disease, the metamycitis and polymycitis, with emphasis on the, uh, the metamycitis. So we know that the metamycitis and polymycitis belong to uh, idiopathic inflammatory myopathies, with the prevalence one in every uh, 100,000 people. And the metamycitis differ from polymycitis in that the polymycitis is a direct T cell media uh, muscle injury. Whereas yeah, the metamycitis is an Im immune complex diseases, it has skin manifestation, and is more likely to associate with cancers. So, as shown in this slide, a typical uh, find, uh, pathological finding of the metamycitis is perivascular uh, inflammations and also atrophies. Uh, it's a, often suggestive of, of the metamycitis. And the clinical manifestation, uh, the major clinical manifestation is muscle weakness. In typical cases, will be a symmetric uh, involvement and uh, uh, affected the proximal muscles. And in some cases, esophagus uh, is in, uh, affected. And also some patients might have uh, myocarditis and arrhythmia. But heart failure is very rare in, in, uh, in myositis patients. As the uh, mycitis is also a systematic uh, autoimmune disease, it also has some general symptoms such as fever and fatigue, and also has some extra muscular uh, manifestations such as skin lesions and calcinosis and vasculitis, especially in juvenile onset uh, dermatomycitis. And also patients could have arthritis, interstitial lung disease, and also at high uh, association with the malignancies. So antisynthetic syndrome is one of the uh, subtype of the uh, myositis patient. In addition to the uh, myositis patient, uh, uh, more likely to have the uh, uh, interstitial lung disease and also may have inflammatory polyarthritis and renal phenomena and mechanic hands. And patient could have fever. The onset of disease is often uh, could have acute onset of disease, and most of them had uh, anti one antibodies. So some of the typical uh, skin issues uh, shown as uh, we uh, could see in the dermatomycitis like Gautrin sign and the shower signs and also mechanic hands are shown here and patient might have heterotropic uh, rashes that are suggested with uh, dermatomycitis. The currently, uh, most commonly used uh, classification cr criteria are proposed, uh, were proposed by Bohan Peter including symmetric proximal muscle weakness and typical rash, and also patients have elevated serum muscle enzyme, and on electron myography showing my passive changes, and also characteristic finding of muscle biopsy, and also without uh, finding of other causes of the myopathies. Some of the uh, extramuscular complications like lung disease and malignancies are uh, often predict patients at uh, worse prognosis. A dermatomycitis rather than uh, a better than polymycitis in uh, uh, the, the association with uh, malignancy. Dermatomycitis has higher association with their malignancies. And also patients with cutaneous leukocytoplastic vasculitis and at an elderly age at the diagnosis of mycitis. And also patients have some non-classical antibodies such as like NTP-155, 140 antibodies are at uh, risk uh, of developing uh, uh, malignancies. And the type of cancer, including uh, most of them are adenocarcinomas, could involve in a uh, service non ovary pancreas, and also in the southeast part of Asia, the uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma is a high uh, associated with the uh, myositis patients. So for the treatment, glucocorticoid steroids remain a cornerstone of treatment. A uh, typical we initiate prednisone at one milligram per kilogram, and slow taper to the lower effective doses. And some of the immunosuppressants, like azocyprine or mesotrexate, can be used as corticosteroid sparing uh, agents. And also some other immunosuppressants, like cyclosporine, self-sept, and large dose intravenous immunoglobulins, are useful in some of the patients. And for those patients refractory to the above treatment, uh, B-cell depletion therapy, like uh, rituximab and sometimes a TM5 antagonist might be useful in treating some ref refractory severe 
uh, my scientist patients. So the pulmonary disease is very common in, in uh, my scientist patients. The most common thing uh, from is interstitial lung disease and also other uh, pulmonary disease like respiratory muscle weakness and pulmonary infection, drug-induced pneumonitis can also mimic the uh, form of interstitial lung disease and sometimes aggravate the uh, patient uh, disease activities. So the IOD in my sighted patient, if, if we use the high resolution CT scanning, uh, around approximately 40% of them will have the interstitial lung disease. And IOD could uh, prelude the, uh, the uh, muscle uh, symptoms. And it can also occur after the onset of myositis or simultaneous with the myositis. And it's a major determinant of prognosis in myositis patients. This is some data from uh, PUMC Hospital in Beijing, a uh, tertiary uh, uh, referral center in, in mainland China. And we've shown here, it's not working. Shown here, like, nearly 30% of them uh, uh, admitted in this hospital uh, will have clinical significant will have clinical significant uh, uh, interstitial lung diseases and more than half of them are very severe in that they have, might have type 1 a respiratory failure and some of them could be life threatening because more than 30% of them died within one year of diagnosis. So the study from Chen from uh, Taiwan also shown that my scientist patient with interstitial lung diseases has worse prognosis than those patients, my scientist patient without interstitial lung diseases. So one of the key uh, factors that predict the patient's prognosis uh, of IOD in my scientific patient uh, including the, uh, are the histopersonological uh, subtypes, including uh, non-specific interstitial pneumonia, NSIP, and also uro-interstitial pneumonia, and organizing pneumonia, and also diffuse LV, uh, LV owner, uh, damages. The uro-interstitial lung diseases usually responded poorly to the corticosteroid uh, treatment and also have a bad prognosis. So on typical HICT scanning, the typical manifestation on the HICT scanning showing it has a patch, patch pattern of peripheral hardcoming uh, manifestation and more pro prominent in the basis of the lungs and has the uh, traction bronchial actasia. Uh, mainly affecting the peripheral part of the uh, lungs and absence of pr prominent ground glass opacities. While non-specific interstitial pneumonia has a much better response to corticosteroid treatment, and on CT scanning could show they, they have spatially and temporally homogeneous non-fibrosis or inflammation, uh, mainly affect the basal part and has ground glass or reticular uh, abnormalities. And another subtype of uh, namely organizing uh, pneumonia, they have the best uh, response to the corticosteroid treatment. On um, CT scanning, the typical one has consolidation on the basal and peripheral part of the lungs. So clinically, the uh, IOD in, in my sighted patient, they might have dyspnea and non-productive cough and dry uh, bipostinal crackles on occultations. And High resolution CT scanning instead of chest as way are uh, more often used in the clinical diagnosis and identify the severity and the extent of the uh, IOD and also in some typical cases could help us to predict the uh, pathological patterns of the IOD in my sighted patients. And primary function tests uh, often reveal diminished diffusion capacity. And in some patients, bronchoscope navigate are used to exclude infections, and in some cases, non-biopsy is needed to make the diagnosis. So there are also some reports that are showing that some biomarker could be used for IOD in my scientific patient, like TEL6, it's a kind of mucinite glycoproteins uh, proteins that are mainly secreted by uh, type 2 alveolar uh, pneumocyte or on senior side cells and the uh, KL6 associated with IOD activity in collagen diseases. And the increasing level of KL6 uh, often pre uh, 
patients at increased risk for sub subsequent uh, mortalities. And the treatment for IOD in myositis, the, uh, the cortical theory is the first treatment initial therapy. And for those with mild IOD, we will use azocyprine plus and together with the cortical theory. And for those patients with severe IOD, cytophosphoramine is used, and sometimes tacronimus are used for patients with severe IOD. And for those patients, if the refractory to the above treatment, and if we can ex exclude the infection, and we could use the rituximab and large dose uh, intravenous immunoglobin for the cell rich treatment. So the features uh, my suggestion of the better prognosis of IOD in myositis patient are like polymyositis are better than dermatomyositis and patient at a younger age at a diagnosis with uh, some specific uh, pathological uh, types such as organized pneumonia and have increasing level of serum creating kinase and also on CT scanning or non biopsy show active infiltration rather than fibrosis. This uh, index will predict a better prognosis uh, and better uh, response to uh, treatment with a uh, corticosteroid. And also other respiratory muscle weakness can be found in my sighted patient. Some patients may have the uh, diaphragm weakness and also have intercostal or accessory muscle uh, involvement that can aggravate the interstitial lung disease in my sighted patient by only occurring in less than 10% of these patients. And also, some other, infa other infections, like PCP infections, are most commonly seen uh, in uh, autoimmune disease. The first one is my sighted patients, and also new persuasion, and also in other uh, uh, micro polyangiitis patients. So these patients, uh, the PCP infection usually occur uh, after one to six months of immunosuppressant treatments and patient may have high fever and also non-productive cough and dyspneas. And on X-ray or uh, chest scanning, we show a bilateral interstitial infiltration. Patients usually have very low CD4 positive T cell, and the uh, fatality will be very high if not treated promptly with the corticosteroid and the uh, trimethoprim, large dose trimethoprim, uh, TMP codes. And also another infection, like CMV pneumonia, can also be an IOD complication in, in the, uh, in the myositis patients and should be excluded when making the diagnosis. And also drug-induced pneumonitis, like mesotraxy, are most commonly used in the treat muscle disease in the myositis patient. It can at any time with any dose uh, can, can cause a drug-induced uh, pneumonia, but most commonly occur within the first years. So they, all these situations should be uh, excluded when making the diagnosis of interstitial lung diseases. And all these cases, uh, situation can aggravate the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, IOD in the myositis patients. So in the last uh, uh, several minutes, I'm going to uh, talk about another specific form of the dermatomyositis, amyopathic dermatomyositis. So the clinical amyopathic dermatomyositis patterns uh, are those patients with uh, usually with a uh, very typical cutaneous manifestation, but they have no evidence of, of subclinical evidence of myositis, we call it cadence. Less than 50% of these cadence patients will develop classic uh, dermatomyositis uh, for a long time, and the majority of them are go for years without developing muscle uh, symptoms. And the cadence, the prevalence is much higher than we would sus suspect it. in clinical practice. We will uh, find uh, uh, meet this kind of patient with cadence uh, manifestation, with the skin manifestation, but no muscle uh, uh, involvement. So the prevalence of IOD is also very high in cadence. But the cadence patient, not like the classical dermatomyositis patient, they are usually antigen 1 negative, but they have some other. Uh, non-classical antibodies such as anti cadm 140 uh, might be specific for the cadm uh, uh, patients and they are also usually suggest they are a rapid progressive uh, interstitial lung disease nearly 40% of the cadm patients with lung disease will die uh, after the diagnosis and this is a study uh, by a Japanese uh, group 
showing that the uh, anti cadmium 140 only occurred in the in patient with the uh, uh, clinical uh, myopathic uh, dermatomyositis, but not occur in classic dermatomyositis or polymyositis uh, or the uh, other autoimmune disease like rheumatoid psoriasis and lupus patients. So another uh, academics also have a high association with the malignancies, and the most commonly seen form is the nasopharyngeal carcinoma, and in, in female patient of breast cancers, and the patient at risk factor that predisposing patient uh, uh, to the malignancy, including patient at, uh, at elderly age when uh, at the diagnosis of myositis, uh, diagnosis of cadence. And these patients usually do not have myositis, classical myositis specific antibody like anti-JO1 and ME2 antibodies, but they have other form of antibodies such as anti P155 and P140 antibodies. The patient have these antibodies I have high risk of developing uh, uh, association with the malignancies. So, but cadmium patient has uh, less high uh, uh, positive rate of anti-nuclear antibodies. They do not have the JO1, ME2 antibodies, but they have other antibodies that is not usually not seen in classic dermatomyositis by like anti cadmium 140 and anti P155 and 140 antibodies. These are not seen in classic dermatomyositis patient, and once fourth of them has elevated serum uh, uh, levels uh, of ESR increasement. So the treatment of cadmium, when patient has the underlying, uh, should screen the patient for, if the patient has used the HS CT scan to, to screen the patient if they have interstitial lung disease, and also screen for the, uh, uh, the underlying uh, association with the underlying uh, malignant tumors. But if the patient do not have IOD, do not have tumors, only have skin manifestation, then these patients should not be treated very aggressively because most of them will only have skin manifestation but not develop, develop to a, a muscle disease for years. So for this patient, we do, might use the, uh, some of the immunosuppressants such as uh, hydrochloroquine plus a low dose of corticosteroid might be enough for treating this patient without muscle diseases. I think I will stop here and uh, I thank you for your attention.